Hey everyone. So last time we met up, um, we were talking about other things in the solar system. So we had finished talking about the planets, but then I asked you the question, what else is out there? So you guys started an investigation and you looked at meteors, meteoroids, meteorites, comets, and all that fun stuff. So now we're going to take a closer look at the Earth and its moon. For this video, we're going to first look at the Earth. And in the next video, we will look at the moon and all the stuff that's surrounded um, around the moon. So the Earth and its moon. So there's a lot happening between the Earth and the moon. A lot of the stuff that we see, a lot of the things that we experience every day, is because of the earth and the moon and the sun, of course, and the relationship between these three. So the earth, the earth moves around the sun, right? So we see the, the earth moving around the sun, right? Where have we heard this whole um, idea about that, the earth moving around the sun? We only studied that for weeks, right? <laughs> The Earth's movement around the sun is called the revolution of the Earth, right? So what is it? What's the path that it's on? Do you guys remember that? Well, I hope you said orbit. <laughs> this movement is the source of many phenomena, including the changing of seasons. So the reason why we have seasonal changes is because of the fact that the earth is revolving around the sun. Now, while the earth is revolving around the sun, we're gonna see something else. What is this telling you over here? So not only is the sun, the earth revolving around the sun, the earth is actually spinning on an axis. It's actually rotating as well. So there's two kinds of things going on here. Now, in regards to the rotation, but the Earth also turns on its axis, kind of like a spinning um, on the spot, right? So like that. This is known as the rotation of the Earth. So before the revolution was the Earth going around the sun. And the rotation is the Earth actually spinning on its spot. And the rotation is what's responsible for the cycle of day and night. So that's why we have day and night. So the revolution, which is the Earth traveling around the sun, that's what gives us the seasons. And the rotation on the spot is what gives us day and night. All right, so let's take a closer look at this idea of day to night, the rotation of the earth. So the earth turns on a tilted axis. So we could see that in this other picture, right? This is the north and south pole, but it's tilted the way that it turns. The imaginary axis runs through the poles, the two poles. The rotation occurs from west to east over a period of approximately 24 hours. So that's why we say that it takes that one day is 24 hours. So when they say the rotation occurs from west to east over here, I've put it there for you. This is west, this is east. So it's going like this. Okay, because of the Earth's spherical shape, the speed of the rotation varies according to the latitude. Now, what's the latitude? The latitude is the measurement of the distance north or south of the equator. So the equator we know is like right around here. So the latitude is the measurement of the distance north or south of the equator. So over here, we see that the latitude is changing, right? And what's happening as we go up? What is happening? Okay, so as this latitude is increasing this way, right? So latitude is a measurement of the distance north or south of the equator. So as 
we go up like this, the speed is decreasing. Okay, so take time to look at that image. The rotation movement causes the cycle of the day, of day and night. Since the earth is round and opaque, you guys remember what opaque means, right? So that means like what happens to light when it touches an opaque surface? Can anybody remember? Right, most likely it's absorbed, right? So since the earth is round and opaque, the sun can only illuminate one side of it at a time. So think about it, think this is the sun, okay? And if the sun, if the earth is rotating, right? The different parts of the earth are gonna have light. So over here, here is light. So what's happening on the other side if this is light and this comes into contact with the sun? Then this is day and this is night. This image also shows you that, right? So the earth is rotating like a spin, like a top, right? It's rotating. So the, the sun's not moving, right? Like that, but this is rotating, right? So when it's day on this side, it's night on the other. So let's just watch this video. I'm pretty sure it's not longer than five minutes. Day and night cycle. Hi, my friends and I are curious to know about the day and night cycle. Don't you want to know why we have the day and night cycle? Come, join us on our trip and explore this wonder of the universe. We will learn that day and night cycle is a natural phenomenon that takes place on the Earth. Planets in the solar system are in constant motion and they revolve around the sun. All these planets, including the Earth, also rotate on their own respective axis. This rotation results in day and night on the Earth. Check this out. The world time zone map shows that it is daytime on some continents while it is nighttime on the others. How does this happen? Come, let us look at the position of the Earth with reference to the sun to understand this phenomenon. The sun is in a fixed position in the solar system. The Earth, as you know, constantly rotates on its own axis, which is an imaginary line that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole through the center of the Earth. This rotation is from West to East and takes 24 hours to complete. Due to this rotation and positioning of the Earth and the Sun, it so happens that only one part of the Earth can face the Sun at any given time. Hence, the part that faces the sun has day while it is night on the other side of the earth that is facing away from the sun. Thus, the rotation of the earth changes day into night and night into day again. However, that part of the earth which has nighttime is illuminated by the moon. But the moon does not make its own light. Just as sunlight strikes the surface of the earth, it does that of the moon as well. The moon reflects this light onto the earth during night. This explains the day and night cycle. It's time to get back home. Summary. Today we learned about the day and night cycle. The earth revolves around the sun and is constantly spinning on its axis. It takes 24 hours to complete one rotation. Only one part of the Earth faces the Sun at any given time. Thus, the part of the Earth facing the Sun has day, while the other part has night.
All right, so we just saw how the rotation of the Earth gives us day and night. And we saw quickly in the beginning that the revolution of the Earth around the sun gives us seasons. Okay, so that's the Earth orbiting the sun gives us seasons. So changes in the seasons or the revolution of the Earth. The Earth revolves around the sun. And I reminded you about that before. Can you remember what is the name of the path that it follows around the sun? I said it again before. I hope you're seeing orbit. Okay. It takes approximately 365 and a quarter days for the Earth to revolve around the sun. So we see that there's a little bit more than 365, which is what we usually say. So this period is called a revolution or a solar year. Can you guys think about why it would be called a solar year? Well, it's the time that it takes the earth to travel around the sun, right? And every time you hear the word solar, you should be thinking about sun. Okay, but let's go back to this idea here about 365 and a quarter days. Did you notice that there is an extra quarter of a day? Now we can't just ignore that extra quarter, right? What, what was actually done with it? So, well, they decided that every four years, a day is added to the calendar, which is the 29th of February, this creates a leap year of 366 days. So 2020 happened to be a leap year. So that means this year we had a February 29th. Now, 2021, will there be a February 29th? Absolutely not. We will have to wait another four years for a leap year. Okay, so we're continuing with trying to understand how we get seasons. Because the Earth's axis is tilted, our planet is in different positions during the year in relation to the sun. The Earth's tilted axis is what causes the seasons. Throughout the year, different parts of Earth receive the sun's most direct rays. So when the North Pole tilts toward the sun, it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere. And when the South Pole tilts towards the sun, it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So you have this image over here, summer in the Northern Hemisphere, winter in the Southern Hemisphere. So if it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere, how is the earth tilted? Is it tilted towards the sun? What's tilted towards the sun, sorry. So over here we say, we see, so when the North Pole tilts towards the sun, it's summer in the Northern hemisphere. So then that must mean the North Pole is tilting towards the sun. And is that what we're seeing? Here's the sun and there's the tilt. Okay, so take some time to look at this. All right, and we see here the South Pole is tilted towards the sun. And when the South Pole is tilted towards the sun, it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So that is all written there. Um, this information was gotten from this website, so please go and visit the website. You can click it from this Google slide. So this is another image that just explains what we were talking about and talks about all the different um, times of the year, the different solstices. So you should take a look at this. Earth has seasons because its axis is tilted. Earth has seasons because its axis is tilted. Earth rotates on its axis as it orbits the sun. 
but the axis always points in the same direction. So over here, we have this is the southern hemisphere and that's the northern, right? So pay attention to north and south. December, summer south of the equator, okay? Winter north of the equator. The sun shines directly on the southern hemisphere and indirectly on the northern hemisphere. So if you notice here, here is the south and it's tilted towards the sun. So whenever we have a tilt towards the sun, that's where we get summer from, okay? In March, fall south of the equator, spring north of the equator, right? So north, south, the sun shines equally on the southern and northern hemispheres, right? So equally, so that means it's not too hot, not too cold, which really explains what spring is, right? It's like this in between summer and summer and winter. Then we have June. What, what, um, what season is that, guys? So winter south of the equator, summer north of the equator. So remember, we're in north of the equator. The sun shines directly on the northern hemisphere and indirectly on the southern hemisphere. So let's look at the tilt. It's tilted towards the sun, right? Remember we saw that in the previous slide. September, spring south of the equator, fall north of the equator. The sun shines equally on the southern and northern hemispheres. So this is just another image that explains the same thing with just less words. And it talks about the amount of hours of sunlight because as you know, we have less hours of sunlight in the winter and we have more hours of sunlight in the summer. And this image describes all of that. All right, so let's just watch this video and again changes in the seasons what's responsible for that it's the revolution of the earth whereas the rotation of the earth on the spot is what causes day and night cycle you know that earth orbits the sun right and that it takes a full year for our planet to complete its orbit. Earth also rotates like a slightly tilted spinning top. Earth remains tilted in the same direction all year round as we orbit the sun. But that means the sun's light shines differently on Earth at different times of the year. Let's look at Earth when it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Observe how the North Pole tips away from the sun. This means that sunlight strikes the Northern Hemisphere at a shallow angle for a short period of time. This is why winter weather is generally cool with short days and long nights. As Earth orbits the sun, we move towards spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Now Earth is tilted neither toward nor away from the sun as day and night are about equal in length. As we make our way to the summer months, notice that Earth is still tilted in the same direction, only now on the other side of our orbit. The North Pole is tipping toward the sun. Sunlight strikes the Northern Hemisphere more directly, and the sun stays in the sky for a longer time. Compared to winter, summer days are warmer, and the sun stays in the sky much longer. Notice too that while it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Because of Earth's tilt, the seasons are reversed. We observed how Earth's tilt creates the different seasons throughout the year. How does this affect life? Plant life and other photosynthesizers, we call them primary producers, depend on sunlight. They respond to the changes in the seasons. 
Earth orbiting satellites measure the amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by these primary producers. Bright regions on this map show where they devour the most carbon dioxide, turning light from the sun into oxygen and natural sugars. In spring, when sunshine strikes the cold waters of the North Pacific, productivity skyrockets. Phytoplankton and other microscopic photosynthesizers form the base of the ocean food web, and all ocean life responds to changes in the seasons. On land, forests grow green during the spring, brightening the continents. During winter, continents in this view turn dark from a lack of photosynthesis. Okay, so we're gonna watch one last video for this section. You've seen the sunset, right? And if you get up early enough, maybe you've seen it rise too. But have you ever wondered, if the sun rises every day and sets every night, where does it go when we can't see it? Well, nowhere. It's actually us that goes somewhere because we're on the earth and our planet is always turning or spinning on its axis. Imagine a line passing through the center of the earth that goes both through the North Pole and the South Pole. We call that invisible line the axis. Earth spins around on this axis like a top. This spinning movement is called the earth's rotation and the earth's rotation is what gives us day and night, every day, all year. If you're on the side of the Earth that's facing away from the sun as the Earth is spinning, it's night. If you're on the side facing the sun, it's, you guessed it, day. Now hold on tight because the Earth is actually moving in more ways than one. At the same time that the Earth spins on its axis, it also orbits or revolves around the sun. This movement is called its revolution. One full orbit all the way around the sun is one revolution, and the Earth takes 365 days, or one year, to complete a revolution. So have you got all of this so far? The Earth is rotating on its axis, creating day and night, and at the same time it's revolving all the way around the sun. Now here's the thing. As the Earth is both rotating and revolving, it's not sitting straight up and down. Its axis is actually tilted just a little. It's not all that much, but this tilt causes one part of the Earth to lean towards the Sun, while another part of it is leaning away. This means that different parts of our planet's surface gets different amounts of sunlight and heat. So, why am I telling you all of this? Well, as the Earth travels around the Sun, it creates a pattern throughout the year. This pattern happens over and over again, and I'm sure you've noticed it. At certain times of the year, you see the northern hemisphere leans towards the sun, and the southern hemisphere leans away. And at other times, the southern hemisphere leans towards the sun, and the northern hemisphere leans away. That pattern, my friend, is what makes seasons. When the part of the world that you're living in is leaning towards the sun, it's warm and the days are long, summer. When you're on the part that's leaning away from the sun, it's cold and the days are short winter. In between, it's spring or autumn. If the earth weren't tilted, we would have the same season all year long. So, revolution, rotation, orbit. Is your head spinning? Let's do a demonstration to shed a little light on these concepts. Okay, you're gonna need a globe and a table lamp without a shade, plus a table to put them both on. Put the lamp in the center of the table and turn it on. Put the globe on one side of the table, now hit the lights. The globe is Earth. Makes sense, right? The lamp at the center of the table is the sun at the center of the solar system. Now slowly spin the globe. As the Earth rotates, the sun lights up one side of the planet better than the other. It's day where the light is shining more brightly on the globe and night where it's not. Now let's see what the Earth's revolution around the sun looks like. Give the globe a few spins with one hand while slowly pushing the globe in a circle around the sun or the lamp with your other hand. So, do you notice how the Earth keeps rotating as it revolves around the sun? If this were the real sun, and Earth, by the time you get back to where you started, the globe would have completed 365 rotations or days, and that's another year gone by. So what does all this show us? It shows that what looks to us to be the motion of the sun in the sky is really caused by the motion of the Earth. So now you know, when you look up and see the sun setting or rising, it's not going around us. It's sitting pretty much at the center of the solar system while we and the seven other planets go around it. That sun always gotta be the center of attention. <laughs> Alrighty.
Alrighty, so that will be it for this video. Um, we will be going on because we just looked at the Earth, but there is also a lot of stuff happening with the Moon as well. So the next video we will take a look at the Moon. But in the meantime, I would like you to read pages 363 to 366, which basically discusses what we just discussed. So, thank you guys for being patient and watching this video and rewinding it and watching it over and over again to make sure that you understand what is happening with the earth in terms of its revolution, right? So it's going around the sun and its rotation where it's turning around on the spot. So I want you to really, really remember that what the revolution around the sun is responsible for what? Well, that's responsible um, for our seasons and the fact that the earth is tilted, that is really what's responsible for our different seasons because if it were not tilted, we would have the same type of season all year round. And what's the next thing that I want you to remember? So I want you to remember that the rotation of the earth is what's responsible for the day and night cycle. So that will be it for today. Again, if you ever have any questions, please just email me at hinksons at loyola.ca. So that's H-I-N-K-S-O-N-S -S at loyola.ca. Loyola. Thank you guys. Have a good day.